18 of them have been approved through the state system and um, we are polling we've already asked for reimbursement for over a million dollars we've probably got about 750 sitting in the queue so by the end of the month we'll probably be about 1.5 1.7 of that 30 will have actually hit the streets. Um, everything's going really well with that. Surprisingly, if you know, you've got 20 projects and $30 million, you expect to have but everything's going really well with that. But if there's any questions about that, I'll be happy to take them. But the next thing that I'd say is that Ready 2.0 is gonna open up late summer, and that's another $500 million from the state. Um, back to the regions we have to compete for it obviously and that open oh, excuse me. well I, I was going to ask has, has there been any conversation on um, the matching of this ready 2.0 since to imagine a lot of communities have kind of burnt through a lot of harbor money and various things is there is any idea what they're going to be looking for or? there will be a local match component um, January, wait, June 22nd. June 22nd, we were in a meeting with IADC. That question came up. They have not worked out the details of the program yet, but there will be a match component. Ready One allowed us to go back in time a little bit to capture, you know, recent investments. So I anticipate that there, hopefully, there'll be that type of uh, fluidity or flexibility yeah. that we're, we can go back they probably won't allow us to double dip but that's something that they're they've heard they're aware of they're going to try to do the best that they can um, to make it as, as as best for our communities the other piece that has been out there for since the law passed um, 250 of them is going to go into a grant program 250 is going to go into a loan program. 250 million. No, no, no. Again, we don't know. They don't know. That's why they anticipated, they projected that they were going to open up in July, but they don't have all the detail, details put together yet. So we're probably looking at late August before we know exactly what that program looks like. From the region's perspective, we're going to come back we'll have county level meetings we'll have regional level meetings and take projects develop a vision strategy take projects and then funnel them down and throw our name in a hat hopefully by the end of the year they'll have an announcement could push out till january Good. i suppose we better touch on our ready project i know uh an already project that was apache drive and uh, East, Tree, East Tree Drive. Um, One day, guys. <laughs> oh, just go ahead. I'm good. Uh, not good all good. Good. Okay. Um, and also a sidewalk along 14. Um, the sidewalk hit some snags. Uh, and tell me if I'm saying anything wrong, but the sidewalk hit some snags. We thought we was ready to go out for a bid on it. They come back and said, "Well, it could could cost us anywhere from two hundred to six hundred thousand dollars to fix the snags." That there was a bunch of other stuff they wanted to do. Um, my opinion is, uh, you know, we we scrapped the sidewalk. That's getting a little bit. We're going to have to come up with that money. Uh, the other, you do, go ahead. do or don't we have to come up with that money? I, I guess because ben, ben sent you out an email, I think, and because I mean we had. We put five hundred thousand dollars into it, and the city put five hundred. So, our two hundred thousand dollars sidewalk project. I mean, so there's two hundred thousand dollars of our money there. Now, does two hundred thousand dollars from the ready match come to that? I the, mean, if, if everything's my opinion is we committed five hundred thousand dollars. We did. We signed a letter saying we commit five hundred thousand dollars. We did. The, but the, the Apache, up. the Apache, come in at. Uh, Two point way over budget. The city's chipping in over a million dollars. I have to get you know the numbers probably back in the but over another million dollars. And my opinion is, let the project go. We, we keep our five. That's my opinion. We keep our five hundred thousand. We promised in place. Um, 
But so there's two two things we got to decide. You know, for sure, are we scrapping the the don't want to put any more money in the sidewalk? Are we scrapping that because that would be county money? And then the other one is, are we going to try to pull your two hundred thousand out like you want to do, or keep your five hundred thousand in that we have committed to the project? My question was the two hundred thousand dollars of our for our sidewalks. I think it's two hundred six thousand dollars is projected to begin. So does the state match? I mean, everything's split up, you know. So the way that our, our budget to the state, <coughs> and I'm going to ballpark numbers because I don't have any, the sidewalk was a ballpark about 120 ready dollars, and I'm going to say about 120 or 40 local dollars. Okay. And then the, the road was 800 and whatever math that equals out to. Uh, because of, we made the budget that way, I spoke with IABC today, uh, it's going to allow us to easily remove the sidewalk project from the overall ready project. And it's going to make it easier on all of us, including the state. The state the state's not going to come to Fulton County and dictate where the local match comes from. So the state, from the state perspective, they just need to make sure that there's a dollar for a dollar. So if we pull the sidewalk project, we're going to have a million dollars going into the road. We're going to need a million plus because the bids came in high to go into the road. You've asked, them, and I think you're asking now, can you pull that 200 and use it elsewhere? If we do that, we need to have a project and it needs to be adjacent to or logically connected to that Apache Drive. We have not gone to the state officially and asked them to pull that sidewalk. Um, you know, there's more conversations that need to be had. Um, but at some point in the very near future, I'm going to come to the city and the county and say, okay, are we pulling it? And we need a written justification for why we're pulling it in order to get it past the state. Okay. I say we vote on tonight so we know. We've got to get the project. We've got a meeting, what, next week on the Apache to start it, start it off. <coughs> yeah, 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 my, yeah, 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 my correct on that. Pretty construction meeting. 26th? Yeah. At 830 or 8 o'clock? Yeah. Something like that. So. I agree. I, I think, personally, I think we need to leave the, the money in there. It's good faith with the city rather than sticking them. Too many people have said that the county and the city don't see eye to eye. I think it'd be, it would not be fair to pull that back out on them. Okay. First of all, I guess, do we all agree we're strapping the sidewalk? We're not putting any more money in the sidewalk? Well, I agree. Yeah. I agree, yeah. yeah. So, yep. so I guess that's, that's one answer you got from us. Okay. So I was thinking the county's part was 200, so the, the county's part of the soft would have been 100 and something, and then the ready would have been 100 and something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I always thought it was the opposite, so that's what that was. What I was trying to get clarified here of what, how it was broken up. Yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. I'll forward you the, the budget to go on. Yeah. So. So the next thing do we keep the 500 in or? Well, we got to keep it in. Okay. I mean, there's no question of that. I just had concerns on how we were, how it was going to play out with what the yeah. state did to us and, and everything. So, you know, which I thought was kind of dirty. Yeah. So, yeah. But that's the way it is. Do we need to make that form of motion? Senator wants to make a motion. I'll make them two motions. One of them was to uh, scrap the sidewalk <coughs> on the Ready Project, and the other one was to keep. Our full commitment of five hundred thousand dollars in. So, so your five hundred thousand is just leaving it in for the total Apache project for the city. You do so it's there's just so everybody's clear on what you're, what you're saying. Okay. So it goes towards your Apache. You've got that ready, ready project, the Apache project. Okay. So is there any other questions from anybody? Okay. That trigger. The only thing is the side you're you've been talking about the sidewalk project. It's just on parallel to fourteen. 
not the sidewalks. It's been entirely Apache. It, it's just, just so it was an emergency knows. evacuation route. Yeah, just so the safe schools right. that the yeah. state yeah. Yeah. Right. stuff on. I know that, but I just want to make sure everybody was aware of sure. it. Okay. It's not the sidewalk around Apache. It's been in for that extension. It's just a parallel sidewalk going toward good funeral home in that direction, correct? Yes. It was a county's, the county's project was scrapping, not the city's, right. or any part of the city's. Okay. Uh, any other comments or questions? All in favor of that? That motion carries three. There we go. I appreciate your time. Yep. Yep. I'll be in touch with you on this. On the, uh, <coughs> very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a department update or uh, I guess Trey, you, you wanted to get in now, right? You're up. Okay. Trey, now. I just asked for it tonight if I could have a, a slot uh, because once I take off, I to give the county a slot in the city council meetings. To share what's going on in the county, anything they feel like we need to be aware of. Just as my whole campaign, I promised and I intend to continue reaching out, working alongside the county. Uh, and I think to do that, we need to have open communication. I will let you know what I can. <coughs> uh, I spent four, day, or four meetings today strictly on some economic development. We're sitting in a prime location at a prime time with. $7 million plants going within 40 miles of us. Uh, we're, we have other communities close to us that are aggressively seeking to, uh, to locate suppliers for these plants. We have to be aggressive. I'm gonna be aggressive. Uh, I know Michael, I work very closely with him. We've had several mm -hmm. hours of meetings and discussions together. <clears throat> he will be aggressive. He told me today that he feels his Fedco board will be aggressive. So I have to challenge you, I have to challenge the uh, uh, county council, and I have to challenge my own council to be aggressive and do what we have to do to have a product that we can market to these potential suppliers. But my, my real purpose tonight was just to extend a hand to you guys. Uh, you know, we've all gotten to know each other very well. I want to continue a great relationship, I want to build that. Uh, I want to see the community grow and not lose opportunity. So appreciate your time, but like I said, come the first of the year, uh, I aim to have some representation at the city council meetings of either one of you guys, uh, county council, or both. So thank you. Appreciate that. Sure. Thank Thanks, Trent. Yeah, don't fall down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't got work with Tom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have department updates. Larry Jowell, Sheriff's Department. I'm sorry, I actually have to speak tonight. More than I get to tell you, I don't have anything. It's okay, you're quick. Good evening, everybody. Yeah. Now, uh, the sheriff has already mailed the monthly reports to you. Um, we've had four uh, fatality crashes this year. That went to five Friday. I'm trying to read it scribbly put, but I'm going to say we had, uh, as of Friday, it's up to five. Um, most were all due to speed, drugs, and alcohol. Friday's was just flat failure to heal, so. Uh, is that a high uh, number? Excuse me? Is that a high number? It's up from 2022, so, yeah. <laughs> um, we have a 2011 Crown Victoria squad car. We want to get rid of it, so the sheriff needs your permission tonight so we can strip it and take it to Olson Auctions. Um, the vendor forms um, that need completed for the federal inmates, Jody got with Kathy Adamson, and we are waiting. Um, those were uh, completed and submitted. Uh, the JCAT program started, it's in its uh, second week, and it is going really well. So that's a positive thing for us. So hopefully uh, the people that are doing that will adhere to it. Uh, Holding 10 for Wabash, two for the Department of Corrections, and you're holding two for other uh, counties. Uh, 63 was our jail population as of this morning, and I think that's what was out when I went home this afternoon. Um, that's all I have. If you have any questions? Okay. Um, on that uh, Crown Vic, are we good to 
Yeah. 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 You guys agree, Dave? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it's it's done. It's it's got the one hundred ten thousand miles on it. Yeah, it's done. That's all I've got, guys. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Say the same thing. It's two for two tonight. John Garrett, by the way. You might want to move that up a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Guys been patching, uh, changing culverts, uh, still operating brush cutter, mowing. Uh, they're laying tubs. They've got quite a bit of tub laid, actually. Good. I know Dave's seen some of the work they've done. Yeah, they're some really nice. Yes, they've done a great job this year so far. Yeah, nine fifty. Let's talk a couple of those. Was, there was our East Kiwana was looking good. Uh -huh. that was, uh, their East Kiwana was one of the better roads that I think they've ever done. Mm -hmm. That turned out really well. Um, uh, we're going to switch over uh, tomorrow and maybe start uh, chip sealing. So good. Um, things are things are going well out there. Do you know how many miles we're going to do this year, John? Uh, that? No, not exactly. Uh, I was going over the list this afternoon, trying to fine tune it a little bit. Okay. But uh, I, I did cut it back a little bit. I'm going to be aggressive on it. Or you know, try to take off on that uh, maybe tomorrow or Wednesday. Good. So, good. Um, which all that actually has worked out well because uh, I guess they've been strapped for trucks delivering oil, and they told me that we're kind of coming into a good time for deliveries and that because uh, other counties are starting to wind down and we'll be able to get deliveries in pretty good order. So, I think it's going to be done by the end of August. Yeah, but probably. I think we'll be fine. Uh, update on Bridge 50. Um, I was out there uh, what, two, two weeks ago, I think it was. at and did get their fiber line uh, rerouted. They are clear of the port construction, clear to start their construction. I talked with them today. They didn't have a definitive date when they're going to start it soon. So uh, they just got to get some stuff on their end ready, and put their ether to start and go here any day. Uh, so should be pretty quick. Um, the power broom uh, it, that we ordered is going to be brought in tomorrow. We're going to take away our old one and drop us off a nice new shiny one. So we got that. And I did have one other thing, uh, Justin Sherman from USI. He sent me this afternoon uh, a form for Bridge 32. Uh, Brian and Rick went out there with me, and I do need a signature for them. Okay. Uh, when we went out for that final inspection, there was uh, the painting, the road markings on the bridge, and then there was some uh, stuff they needed picked up in the right of way. Signage, I think, was in there. was one sign on one end. Done. That's all been completed. I went out there today and inspected it myself. It's done. Good. But uh, they just needed your two signatures. If I can give you my word that it's done. Um, that's all I have. Sounds good. Um, out of fair. And a school bus driver to tell me that some of the roads you've laid the uh, millings on over east, mm -hmm. 450 east over around that area, mm -hmm. was, was getting a little ripply, kind of rough. Yeah. If you get a chance, you might yeah. upgrade it up. Those are going to be some of the first roads that we chip. Are you? Yeah. Okay. So okay. they should be getting taken care of here in the next month. Okay. Not soon. Okay. So. What's the back?
launch for that. Well, should I say you guys last week? Yeah. Um, we've discussed this in the LEPC. Um, I know John's, the county highway department's done uh, messaging on Nixle. Um, the whole group felt with the fundage and so forth, I mean, EMA's budget comes out of county general, but uh, rain mobility uh, was substantially higher. And Everbridge is about half the price which is Nixel and rate mobility. So if you want to include a messaging system to the public, Nixel, like we've had before, we'll need to get this contract signed or approved today so we can, for signatures. Um, is that 4691, does that sound right? Uh, yes, Okay. first year, yeah. yeah that's first year. It's mm -hmm. 30 something uh, subsequent years. Yeah, but that, that sounds right. Possibly use some of the funds that are already allocated in the EMA budget to pay for those. So you think you've got enough funds to pay for them, is what you're telling us? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I, I do with LEPC funds and, and so forth, and a portion of the EMA, so, but LEPC funds have to be voted on, so. Um. That's up to you. I mean, we don't have to. I mean, is this That's, something you think is is it beneficial? I mean, we did it once and it kind of went away. I forget why, but I mean. The inactivity, uh, we used to get it for free. So uh, when your prior director took over, something happened and we started paying for it. It was like the basic plan. So what happens is you can put, if you're a Nixle or Everbridge or you sign up to do, to do that, anybody in the public, you could be going through Indianapolis or any other state that has that, it's going to give you warnings or whatever in that area that you're attending to. So um, it's gonna have to be public outreach, pushing it for people to sign up. So if you don't want the messaging platform, you know how Facebook, social media works to begin with, that's up to you, but I know there's been some discussion or if you want to hold off for a while, it doesn't matter to me. Jerry, if you want to speak on that, or Dave, I mean, you've been at these meetings. Um, I like the looks of when the meetings we saw in the PowerPoint presentation and stuff mm -hmm. that they have, they look good. I mean, to get people out, but like I say, unless people sign up for it, it's not going to do something good at all. That is correct. I guess that's my concern is, you know, we right. went through it once, so I'm just, if What's you want the public to, thinking about it? If you want to stick with the, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm on so many social media sites, and then we have the uh, boards as well that we can put up in our own uh, neck of the woods. But um, a lot of people are still connected with Marshall County. They put every little event, weather statement on the Everbridge platform or their Nixle platform. John, would you use it? Oh, yeah. Uh, back when you had Nexel and it was dropped, there was a large withdrawal. You know, people were calling all the time. How, how's come you're not putting that stuff on anymore? You know, what happened to it? There was a large withdrawal problem. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. People want to know why we didn't have it anymore. Uh, there, was a, there was a large following on that. Okay. Um, Getting them back on it is going to be your, you know, like you say, it's going to be a problem. But uh, I think it would need to be put on the county website and pushed to your news media around here and um, on our social media. Social media is Boston. Larry, what do you think? Um, I have one question. Would that benefit the, uh, the internal department as far as being able to contact the deputies if we need it? No. No. Okay. This is a it's a We're public talking, platform. Are we talking about so if you look at your own sheriff's department app, right. that you know Travis sends out or that app automatically sends the weather out. So if people sign up for your app and they can see the sex offenders okay. and all that, okay, um, that's that kind of information, but on a weather or road closure, okay, status. All right. Well, just from what Marshall County is doing with Nixle, they'll get. Um, they'll be they'll post something and if they need help 
so then somebody can respond if they want to come out and pick up that ship. So that's completely separate? Yes. Okay. Yes. Or a separate part of Mixel? Yeah. It's probably well, it's body. something like rave mobility. Okay. So rave mobility is more robust and it connects to our CAD system. So, so at that point in time, we think. So but no, I'm gonna, I'll go with John on this one. Yeah, that would be a good asset for us to have. So if you did it for like a year or two, or just a year to see how it goes, I mean, if you couldn't get that buy-in, yeah, then this, you drop it. This would be some benefit schools quite a bit too, with it, as far as roads mm -hmm. and conditions there. Yeah, so like when WTH maybe. wanted us to add that $5,000 platform to that, that's kind of like this was. It's mm -hmm. similar, but it doesn't put it on our map. Right. When you say John, yeah, and I think this would be used a lot more than WTH. Mm. Be, you know, because with WTH, everybody's got to log into their computer or that that map. Mm. This sends you a text, and you yeah, have it right there in front of you. It says Olson Roads closed from here to here for this date. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any comment from public under questions? Sounds a good idea. Yeah, right. I was impressed when I looked at the game. We can get the following back. It, it yeah. was a good tool. I'll just yeah, let's see how it works for a year. If it doesn't, then we scrap it and we go from there. Could it so be entertain a motion to uh, enter into the contract with Everbridge for the cost of four thousand six hundred ninety-one dollars and ninety cents for the first year? Correct. Correct. Okay. I'll make the motion. Second. Any other questions for anybody? All in favor? That motion carries three. Okay, we'll sign that. I will tell you, I spoke with Holly. I changed, uh, I crossed out the expiration date. That quote still goes, and then the address of delivery. So, okay. we'll get with you later, John. The second one will be the priority dispatch quote. Um, the quote was signed to hold it. The price where it was at to move forward. I need your guys' approval. That's the same situation with the address. I crossed that out. Should be 2006 uh, Sweet Gum, but that's for police and fire protocols implementation due to the house bill. Okay, so it's basically something you got to do. Well, yeah, and to stay with the same program. And like I told Holly, Holly had a question. Uh, we've had priority dispatch at the International Academy of EMB since we developed 911 in Fulton County with a, a EMB. So instead of having a hodgepodge of programs, um, if we can just stay with the same program, I know it's a little bit more expensive. However, um, they do do their due diligence. Do you say you have money to pay for that? Yeah, we'll have to appropriate out of the um, 911 funds. So if, if I can get your approval or I can move forward with that appropriation on the next round. So this is your it's an annual maintenance type deal for your, your dispatch, just for clarification. For yes, so you'll, you'll see all three protocols, fire, EMS, and uh, police. Uh, we currently work through um, Dr. Mann for medical direction, it is required that we do that for aspirin diagnostic tool to add aspirin or tell a patient to take aspirin, strokes, cardiac arrest, and uh, CPR. If we do breaths uh, versus compressions and so forth, he outlines that so and little, oversees that program. A little blurry on the price, is that 75 or 76? 76. 76. 76. 76. 96993. <laughs> That's why yeah. I wanted a little clarification. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it is salty. Yeah. So Most programs are, that does integrate into our CAD system. That's why that price is. It's just not the cards that sit on the desk. It will integrate with the CAD system and document like our EMS programs do as well. Okay, so this $76,993 is with priority dispatch 
That is correct. Uh, the annual fee is the maintenance. You, you're seeing we're purchasing the programs. The programming and the annual. Okay. Yeah, so uh, that gives us the annual maintenance for all three uh, disciplines. <coughs> and then the training that's in that quote gets reimbursed by the state. I believe that was around eight to nine thousand, between yes. eight and nine thousand. Okay. That'll come back here. Just a figure, but I can't remember. Yes, we will not pay, pay that. Okay. So that'll be in the sixty some thousand range. So Second. Any other questions from anybody? All in favor? Motion carries three up. Okay, we'll get that sign. Um, I gave you some instructions and copies of the budget that I'll be presenting tomorrow. Um, if you guys are present tomorrow so you can follow along. Um, I did have a correction on my LEPC budget that I sent because um, I didn't correct all the pricing on it. And so forth, but that was that information, and that's all I have basically for 911 and EMA. Um, one last thing about EMA we did have a great turnout at our uh, meeting, our district meeting. It was a packed house, and we did have a lot of uh, our constituents here or our stakeholders here that want to go to that quarterly meeting. Um, few folks from the town of Akron and so forth will be at the Kosciuszko mm -hmm. meeting as well. So, and last but not least, EMS. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to ask you for a motion um, in reference to Lutheran uh, giving <coughs> us 180 days uh, ending their contract, Holly. Um, I, Holly has a copy of the Plan B that was sent that you guys signed on your last one, and that we will still hold a meeting over in Akron. We will do one in Kiwana. We have yet to set that. We need to set that date for Kiwana to get the public input, but after that, we've got to move forward with the RFP, which Barry is going to start put, putting that in place. It will take approximately 30 to 60 days. But what I need you to do today is uh, move forward or vote on advancing to phase two of the project for an RFP. And that is request for proposal if anybody doesn't know what an RFP is. And he's he's going to wait till after the after the Kiwana meetings before he really dives into that because he really can't finish his report on what our needs are until he talks back to the Kiwana press. Uh, the needs are basically there, but we do need those two points on the stationary where uh, what their feel is, uh, how they like the ambulances in their locations, mm -hmm. and that strategic plan that we've been talking about at our meetings and, and our small meetings that we've had. So um, there is a lot of information that's already gathered. Again, we started this way in advance. So last year when Lutheran pulled out out of Akron, uh, we contracted very immediately a couple months afterwards. Glad we did. Yes. So um, that plan has already been in place. So just for public assurance, um, we've been doing this for a few months now. Mm -hmm. So we just need to know what they're thinking out of the outer edges as well and come up with pricing. And that pricing will come in once that art with people uh, answer the RFPs. And then you can gather and vote and work upon that, or if we need to adjust some things accordingly. I will tell you, we had a meeting on Friday, and um, not for sure how that went, in my opinion. But uh, anyway, Lutheran there was there, and some city representatives, and um, the sheriff's department, myself, and Barry Ritter was there. So. Is what it is. So, yeah, I think he needs to be moving forward on that. And that's what we've got to go on tonight, right? Yeah, so basically, phase two, as I highlighted it on your paperwork, Brian, is request for proposal countywide EMS ambulance service, uh, development of specification, publishing the request for proposal, evaluating the proposals, interviewing the vendors, selecting a vendor, negotiating contracts, onboarding, and implementation. 
quality assurance and service level agreement management mm -hmm. um, is part of the first developer and their whole task in general for phase two. So um, that, that has been outlined under tax seven report and um, I think you guys are gonna have to move on it so we can get that RFP written mm -hmm. and submitted and so we are um, prepared to get those bids before mm -hmm. yeah. the later. So he has here on phase two, it's two, not to exceed 280 hours. It's 150 bucks an hour with $42,000 not to exceed. Mm -hmm. um, all the expenses are included in that fee and the duration is 180 days from the end of phase one, which I think you said he will, he's gonna, you're gonna step on that harder because that, that's, he may get, I mean, 180 days, we need to have that done here yeah. real quicker, so I'm just, well, he'll have the office. He's working say phase one, phase two together. I'm just saying what the contract It says 180 says. days here. Okay, yeah. He's okay. aware of that. Yeah. Right. Um, but he's going to work for us after he puts out the RFPs. He's going to he's going to help us select them. He's going to write them. He could be on that for 180 days. Mm -hmm. yeah. to, to lose to or whoever you get takes takes over. I mean, you know. I know. I just want to make sure that the He's not thinking that the RFP then start to No, no, so he, he's well aware. Just clarification, yeah. just so everybody out here is on the same page. Mm -hmm. He, promised, he yeah. promised us 30 to 60 days right. to left RFP. Yeah. Just um, in your guys' reference to the contract, uh, Barry was not going to come up last Friday. I told him what we received the letter on Wednesday. He said he would definitely be there because he wanted to develop a plan and move forward in reference to the letter didn't understand why that letter came out. I mean, I think the writing's on the wall, and he's not going to come out and say that, but he's very proactive, and you're not, he's, he's already started the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of paperwork in the background that he can start before the two meetings hit mm -hmm. from the prior yeah. locations. And he's got plenty of maps, so I do know um, Akron will probably be a full house this week. Thursday at 6 o'clock, the community building. So if you can't make it to the one in Kiwana later, it might be the best judgment to show up at Akron. Mm -hmm. okay. Any motion? Okay. Okay. Well, so, excuse me. So, so the time frame of phase two, the end date of the time frame of phase two is when? When was the end date? I didn't hear that. It's 180 days ago. From? The end of phase one. Which is, which is when? Okay, I would say so start. if they if they sign it here to move forward with 180 days, it's going to start. Yeah. So, so today would end phase, phase one. one and begin phase two. Well, he's still got a little bit saying? of work in phase one because he's going to backtrack and meet with the public. Yeah. He's, he's going, going to follow both. through with phase one because he can't help with. Lutheran did and put us on the table. We've already pro we've already promised the public we're going to do it and we're going to follow through. Oh, we have to. We have to. Yeah. So there will be one in Akron and one in Kiwana. We'll be paid accordingly, and then uh, once you agree to push to phase two, that's when phase two starts. This is the first time we've ever had to move one forward. So your contract ends with Lutheran January fourteenth of twenty twenty four. At midnight. So, and Barry said within the next 60 days, we will have an RFP. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. That's what he's putting on the table. Possibly even as early as 30. It's not right anymore. It's just verbal. Well, get it writing if that's what you want. No, it's just a little nice. But I think we still need to move forward. Yeah. Right? So we need to move forward, but you, you like to have stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just having the sense of no moments. I just want to make sure we're, I, <coughs> things happen. I That's all. I'm just that's all I'm at. So I think I came to motion in to start uh, phase two of British Strategy Services. So moved. Second. We have any other questions out here? Okay. Very good. All good. Motion carries three.
Is there anything else about Luke? Any, any more questions? Anybody else? Anybody? Does anybody have any questions on what, what's going on with Luther? Yeah, with the request and proposal, that's basically putting out to anybody, well, yeah. anybody out there to give a bid for doing the service. That is correct. And Mostly private entities. Or anybody who is private, any EMS any, service. Any EMS service. Yes. Okay. All over the state. Could be hospitals, private. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. how does that get distributed? He just, this fritter is, he has contacts and he just makes sure it gets to the right hands. Most of the time they got a website they put it on that people look for. I guess like I'm when you do a road project, they'll put it on uh, where they know where, you know, Fender and Brown or EMB goes on and checks them every so often and see what jobs are coming up. So it's relatively proactive and each other is correct. I mean, Barry, Barry's on the, give a brief. Okay. I mean, Barry's like the state, works with the state. I mean, he, he's right. Barry. So Barry is uh, me, kind of, that is retired and has moved on to his own services. So he does a lot of consulting for the state of Indiana. He's doing currently with EMS. Um, he works with our legislative departments. Um, our senators and so forth, but he's going around the state of Indiana and he's contracted to do so to take, uh, they're working on currently how to cross uh, the borders in your communities for EMS or ambulance services. So that is, we all know since COVID, the lack of participation in employees and so forth. Um, he has been contracted and so is Homeland Security to do that study where they can cross jurisdictions and we can coordinate CAD systems and we can see where other ambulances are at so we can pull those resources. So if we see one stationary in Plaskite County, we're like, you know, Plaskite, can we, uh, we need an ambulance at such and such. But we currently do that now without having that CAD system, we call around when it becomes that big of an issue. We don't like to see that issue, so, uh, a lot of people don't like to cross the community lines. But he's been contracted by uh, the state, basically, to go around and do this. So when you talk about, um, hey, we don't have it in writing, if he would go back on our contract in writing, that would hurt his business severely. And it would he would hold ground with the services that he's doing for the state of Indiana on uh, that research. So. <coughs> I trust Barry, I have my faith in it. If he doesn't get it done in 60 days, I'll do it myself. We will get it done. This, this community will continue in with service. Thank you for that, Gail. Thanks, Gail. You're welcome. Any other questions? Anything else for Gail? Okay. Thanks, Gail. Okay. Casey, do you have anything? I'll assign it in my office. I guess I can tell you uh, Friday, one of my first deputies took her state board and she passed, so I have a new level to now. Other than that, all the time. Good. Good. Good news. Kathy, Treasury, Just working on tax sale. The first round of advertising goes out next week, and we are advertising 163 properties. That's the lowest we've done that I can remember. Good. We're getting people to pay, working on demands right now for personal property and mobile homes. And I've also sent out her delinquent courtesy. So right now we're just under 550,000 that is delinquent from anything from spring and prior that has not been paid. So people are, we're getting there. We're getting people to pay. So other than that, things are peachy. Thank you, Kathy. All right, we have uh, Jerry Corner. Good morning, Jerry. Good evening, everybody. Good to see you all. How are you doing? Doing wonderful. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you've been busy. Yes. That's mm -hmm. so true. Right. Um, I just wanted to let you know that uh, through today, uh, checking with our vital registrar, um, we've had 109 deaths in Fulton County. Um, and of that, 37 have been investigated by the coroner's office. So that's approximately 34% of the deaths that occur here in the county. Of that, we've had 23 uh, men and 14 ladies. 
Uh, in case you're curious, on last year we had 39 uh, deaths in the county at this point. Um, of that, we had one determined, undetermined, 30 natural, and six are accidental. We've had five autopsies, uh, 10 labs have been performed, and then we've had toxicology, five automatically go along with the autopsy, and eight then uh, were conducted by our office. So that's a little bit about our demographics for the moment. Uh, grants are ramp ramping up right now. Uh, the Indiana Department of Health opened up, so I'm excited about that. Uh, we'll be submitting our uh, requests and grant documents later this week. We also have a hemp grant that's relative to the funding that assists us with our 2023 tabletop exercise. So what that means is that it's $20,000. I will tell you that there will be a group of us working on this, collaborating together. Um, we've also asked for uh, assistance from the state, which we've made uh, several pleas already. Um, and I think that we're probably going to go down and visit with that person in Indianapolis. Um, I, I guess that's the way they prefer to do that. Isn't that what we're doing? Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, because we want to get that and access it, it's relative to our tabletop exercise. Now, in case you're not up to date on that, we had one last year that was uh, centered in Akron. We tried to go all over the county to be inclusive with everybody. And that was with Sunoco products. And just a quick scenario or snapshot of what happened, um, a great big tanker truck that was leaving their uh, facility fell over and it's got this hot glue that ran all over the street. So it was all about cleaning that up and what to do. So we've got another one this year. I can't reveal all the details on it, but I will tell you it's relative to series solutions and so it's a hazardous chemical. So this hemp grant is for hazardous chemicals and hopefully that will help us to you know, get that accomplished. Another thing that's important is our LEPC, that's the Local Emergency Planning Committee. We meet together. It's vital for our county and the attendance, a collaboration and a participation is very critical because that also is a basis and a foundation to get our grants. So we have to have all that stuff. Uh, they're actually meeting tonight right now as we speak. So uh, anyway, I'm real proud of it though. We've had a big pickup with that. It seems like there's a lot of excitement and all that's igniting the whole county. So we want to be safe and we want to be proactive for anything like that that might occur. My, my last thing, I, or I got two more short things. On August 9th, I'm all excited about this. There's going to be a lunch and learn at the detention center where everybody from the county that's on a tier two, a tier two means like hazardous materials. So from the different factories and uh, companies around the county that deal and handle hazardous materials, they'll come in. We're going to have a presenter and we'll get to know each other a lot better and get to know what's going on all over the county and that's on august 9th uh, coming up so i'm excited about that too and then uh, the last thing i just have a little snippet to tell you about our um, we had our conference a couple of weeks ago and we had the biggest amount of people we had the greatest attendance ever it was over 400. so i know we're still probably number two in the nation but we're, uh, it's like a big crescendo. Every year it gets better. And we had like Jason White, if you've ever seen 48 Hours, and that's like a homicide show on television. So he came in and spent a whole day with us reviewing multiple cases and was very meaningful, very powerful, and we loved it. And I think that's why people come and it just gets fuller and fuller. So I'm proud to be part of that too. So any questions about anything? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we'll uh, Michael Good evening, Michael. How are you guys doing? Good. Uh, start off tonight with the housing symposium. It's going to be set up sometime in August as the housing study continues on. Um, 
I tried to share, I don't know how successful I was with this, but I tried to share the information they gave me with you, the county council, city council, things like that. <coughs> if you didn't get the forward, send it to me, let me know and I'll send it back to you. I can't, I started to print this thing off and it turns out it's about um, 150 pages full of PowerPoints and, and reports and all kinds of things with way too much to deal with. And so it's easier if you deal with it. I've got it up on my computer at the office and it's 14 screens, believe it or not. So, um, but the housing study, the symposium, when it's set, be about two and a half hours long. And we're inviting everybody in the public will have a story in the newspapers, press releases and all kinds of stuff, letters, personal letters, things like that that are out and ready and um, whole, whole communications package is really what it's going to be. Um, but I keep an eye more on the, uh, the newspapers and uh, Wes will get ready to do something with it. And so we'll get that out. There's going to be radio spots, things like that. I mean, you cannot miss this if you, don't, if you want to. Um, move on and um, I did a last week um, or no the seventh it was actually uh, did the first of us what I hope is going to become a series of seminars on economic development and different programs the trends in the field and things that they are they're not what you think they are anymore I found a few things out myself um, had Lee Llewellyn from the Indiana Economic Development uh, Organization come in, private organization like FedCo, membership driven though, things like that. And uh, Lee's been head of IEDA for about 10 years, but he has been doing economic development for the state of Indiana at the state level for probably about 35, 40 years. And it was really, really good. Um, I'll suggest that if you didn't get to see it, uh, Go to channel four in the search engine type FEDCO and it pops up. I am going to recommend you use a pair of uh, earphones because uh, some of the quality, sound quality is not the best and you can hear it best through the earphones and whatnot. So, and there's going to be more to come on that. I've got a young lady who's going to come in and talk about agricultural economic development. Uh, I have a gentleman who uh, I'm meeting with on Thursday, I believe it is, um, and he's going to talk to me about, uh, he's going to be coming in, but he's going to be talking about downtown development. It's going to be Main Street. And uh, then he's, once we set up the dates and decide what he wants to talk about, and we get his speech down from three hours to about an hour, um, then we'll bring him in, have a conversation, and go from there. Let's see. Uh, I think that's about it for that. And then, um, as you know, I came to you at the last meeting and uh, the county uh, council will find this out tomorrow, I guess, sometimes tonight. Um, we need $66,000 and change uh, to get Blacker going. And this is going to be to feed Nipsco to get their feet going. Um, we're asking for a loan, basically, is what it's going to be to start with. Um, we're going to split it 33,000, whatever change there is there. Um, otherwise, Blacker is just going to sit there and do nothing. So, uh, there'll be more details tomorrow. I'll kind of share with you guys before. So, uh, it's that's just an informational feed for you. And then, lastly, I will say Randy attended his first uh, FECO meeting the other day and. Uh, I'm happy to have him on the board. He was very uh, good, sat there and listened, and then he made the wonderful statement of uh, sometimes I think out loud and about half a dozen guys go, welcome to the club. You know, <laughs> and he was uh, very good and very insightful on in some of the issues that we were addressing. So I think the council made a really good uh, addition to our board. If Randy wants to say something, I'm gonna let him say it. If not, that's okay. Do you need a motion from us on that 33000 to approve? If yeah, you want to do it, yeah. It's, it's, cause we typically do that. Yeah. Um, is it going to go anywhere I guess? If we, we can make the recommendation I mean, before the... I mean, I, yeah, I, I think we need to make a recommendation. I mean, we have two businesses out there. 
Okay, and we, we can't leave it. It's, it's got to be finished. It's be done. You know, one way or the other, no matter what you think about it, um, if we don't have it, you can't sell it. You can't do anything with it. And this will get it finished. There's been an, an arrangement that this um, will be finished by the end of the year. No question about it. And they're ready, waiting. EMP e is waiting. The only reason it's not started is because we need the money for the 66, and um, uh, they have they're so busy they have to work find a work crew that they can actually pull in the work on. Of course. But we're that sure. Does that hold up the road too? Does it? Work? Is that holding up the road work out there too? Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay. I mean the whole thing's going to be completed right? with them. Um, they're going to start. You know where the road kind of ends and mm -hmm. it's really that's where they're going to start they're going to blend it and then take it all the way out pave that front and everything and uh, just put the whole thing it'll be operational yeah. and you're going to motion it to we're splitting with the city 50 50 correct i'm going to the saying? city next okay mm -hmm. right. um, so to uh, recommend funding half of the uh, Sixty-six thousand and change for yeah, the finish. Yeah, I don't have the exact figure, but they're right now. Yeah, it's happening. Yeah. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any other questions? Clarifications. All in favor? Motion carries through you. Thanks, Michael. Okay. Great. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> I'll be brief. Uh, I think at times people probably thought I was one of the biggest critics of FedCo. But my my criticisms were because of lack of knowledge. I uh, uh, attended the meeting the other day. I was, thought it was very graciously received. And it seemed like a good board to work with. Uh, knowledge is power. You know, and uh, I will say that they've done quite a bit that I was not aware of. So that was enlightening to me. And uh, we've got some intelligent people on the board. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm positive. I'm positive when the day comes, I can't come and have a positive attitude and I'll step down from office. But I believe there's opportunities. We're in, a, uh, like Prince said, I believe we're in a, in a season of opportunity. And uh, growth is there in our, in our, uh, in our grasp. So uh, looking forward to working on the board and I'm just to serve. So appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so thank you everybody. Okay. We have, uh, you guys see the travel authorizations? Mm -hmm. There's a list of them here, I've got to approve for each one. They're to approve the travel authorizations as presented. So moved. Second. All there. Motion carries the silence. I, I will make a comment. There's a lot of them that were, evidently didn't know we was doing this because there's a lot of them that's backdated. Um, they were all notified at the same time. Yeah, I don't know. We need to send out another well, reminder or what? She did. Did you? Okay. Because mm -hmm. I was wondering, there's just. Okay. <coughs> Have you guys had a chance to look over the personnel policy? Uh, we tabled that last meeting. Do you have any questions? Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'd entertain a motion to approve the uh, personnel policy changes as presented. And that's just that sheet we have, right? Yeah. Just what was that, that's what the was only it? changes in the personnel policy, yeah. the sheet you sent out, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know if it's this one, but it's on there. It, it's yeah. One center packet. Yeah, it's in a packet. Yeah. Okay. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3-0. Okay, let go. Um, the health funding resolution. I don't have one. It was meant. It was mentioned at the last meeting that you have one at this meeting. I don't have it. 
No, I don't know. What okay, like, it's on here. Can, can, can we get one for the next meeting? Do you want to, it's on the website. Is that the one you want to use? I haven't even looked for it yet. Oh, you haven't? No. Okay, okay. Is that something you want to do? Do you get it ready for us for our next meeting? Yeah, I can look into it. Yeah, there, there's one on the, supposedly one on the, so the governor thinks that there's one on the website that you template to fill in the, you know, county and so forth. You know, we'll opt into the. Joe's okay. got a question. Well, I just want to make a comment about that, not being pushy about this um, resolution, but you have to pass it and it has to be submitted to the state by September 1st. Mm -hmm. Right. Just wanted to say that. We get, yeah. we, we get it August 1st, it should be, better be submitted by right? Okay, yeah. all right, I just wanted to right. reiterate. <laughs> yep, so we got to get on it, yeah. you know. Okay. Good. Anything else? Okay. Hey, Brian, just an update from Hope really quickly. Um, I think I mentioned this before, but we are um, partnering with Doug Beller um, for Transpo with uh, Indiana University Kokomo. Uh, their class to do a program review of their current service to see if it meets the needs of the county based on whatever methodology, program methodology review that they're going to do. So <clears throat> we um, have submitted a partnership request to the Polk County um, Chamber of Commerce and they have confirmed that they will be our partner on this. Um, the next step is to meet with the student team to discuss the details of the project and what that looks like for the future. So the hope is to They've done surveys themselves, but this would be a more in-depth program review just to understand um, the details of what potential transportation issues that we're missing. Are there times, days, locations, areas um, yes. that potentially, yes. So uh, the hard part is that you can't make financial decisions without data. And so the hope is to give Doug the information he needs to be able to go back to the um, state and ask for additional funds or determine how he can uh, navigate that. So I don't know yet what the timeline will be. Um, I probably will know more about that after we meet with um, Rosalind, who is the professor, and her team of students. So we just got back that email today um, to, for the request to, to meet with them. So we'll keep you posted. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Okay. Um, you guys have a chance to put minutes over for July 3rd and July 13th. Mm -hmm. Any corrections? Yeah. Inter entertain a motion to approve both those minutes. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3-0. Okay. Claims, just had a chance to claims over. Any questions, corrections, concerns? Yeah, yeah, okay. Good yeah. insurance claim um, docket for the disbursements uh, 615 to 621 at 17,335, $70,358.97. Insurance claim docket for disbursements of 622 to 628 at $49,335.32. Insurance claim disbursements 629 to 75, $4,408.60. We have a claim for utilities of $12,903.86. We have payroll for uh, 714 of $268,963.74. With a payroll deduction of $95,343.41. Insurance claim docket for disbursements of 76 to 71, 12. It's $13,332.01. Uh, insurance 
insurance claim to not get July fees, $39,932.12. And a claim docket for miscellaneous claims for July 17th, $367,414.39. We have a claim Uplink unemployment, $333.11. Transfers. Um, county commissioners um, from equipment repair and maintenance of $2,200 to uh, contract of $2,200 is transferring the money to pay the winter strategic services 2023 invoice. Yeah, we're probably going to have to do another one now, aren't we? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we have a transfer from the county commissioners from the equipment repair and maintenance of $3,500 to the Wallace program. Transfer money into a new account to pay for the 2023 Wallace program with Fulton County Wallace Center. Transfer from the Veteran Service Officer, Office Supply, uh, to printing at $47.50. It's a payment to Allegra Marketing and Printing for the Banner of Honor of Jeff Markley. for request for the auditor um, from computer maintenance software and dues to financial and taxing annual payment of six thousand forty dollars to pay for the Lyle software annual license support and maintenance to financial taxing and your payment of ten thousand seven hundred and fifty five dollars uh, to pay for the Lyle software annual license support and maintenance. You don't need to sign it. I just wanted that in front of you so you know what phase two was. Mm -hmm. Just to clear. Okay. Because you've already signed that contract. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. New business. Yeah. Um, oh, would you? No, no. You got some? Okay. You had a bill for Acker to use the community oh, center. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do we need to decide how to do that or if we can do that or how we're going to do all that? Yeah, I believe I can pay that with our county credit card um, that fee because obviously we don't have a check to, that's not how county business works so I mean that's how I did it for LAPC for when we had our exercise but I need to know where you want to pay that from you can submit the invoice for payment and get a check beforehand before so, Thursday well not before Thursday yeah, yeah, she's she, talking yeah, about she it. just it's emailed Thursday. us last Thursday, was it? Yeah, she just emailed Thursday it or Friday. And then, what was it, $500, and then you get 150 deposit back, so yeah. you get $350 total. You, does that sound okay if you use her credit card? You if she opened up the letter. And then just, yeah, I'll just give it. But where we're going to pay it from? I don't. LAPC meeting, right? No, no it's, it's not. That's EMS. EMS. And what's meeting? To our commissioner's contract. Yeah, we can do that. I mean, because we did it with Ritter. We take it out of the same fund we did Ritter. I'll just bring the receipt to you after. Okay. 
Um, the only other thing, the well, only other thing I got was we had an insurance meeting today, um, kind of go over what the rates are going up. Um, they give us what, probably 15 to 25 percent, maybe, in that neighborhood. And projected is 25 percent. They don't anticipate. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to do a few things to get them down a little bit, but I think that's the. I thought that was bad though. I heard someone in a business today tell me there's one up forty percent. So insurance is going through the roof. So just kind of giving you a little heads up. It is what it is, I guess. Okay. Uh, I don't have any new business. Doug, did you have something you Brian, I got a story that I need to tell you, mostly because I told these two guys. Um, out at the fair this week and I don't know if it's old business or new business but is now the time yeah, yeah, go ahead. yeah. Come on up. it Come happened on. a long time ago in a galaxy far far away <laughs> <laughs> I think Everett Smith was the commissioner I'm not sure about that but I uh, came in um, and presented something to the commissioner and uh, argued with him probably about money. And at the end of our discussions, I said, by the way, would you guys mind if I planted an oak tree out on the courthouse lawn? And they looked at each other and said, that's fine. That would be great. And Bill Freiberg was in that meeting, and he printed that in the next day's sentence as kind of the bottom line of the commissioner. And the day after that, I had three ladies, Aileen Bittinger, um, Georgia Bell and Island, and I cannot think who the fourth, third one was, came walking in um, from the Women's Garden Club. And they had a story for me about the courthouse <laughs> lawn. And, and what had happened was that the lawn was essentially bare. The, the courthouse property was without vegetation. Um, and they uh, uh, were going back right at the end of World War II, I think. Uh, and they sat down and started talking about it, and they drew a plant map. They designed plantings for the courthouse lawn, and, they took it to the commissioner and they said, can we put this in? And they said, whatever. And the building janitor had a contract to do things, job description, that included nothing outside. And for him, it was one of those, you're doubling my work. Uh, am I getting paid more? Commissioners being public stewards. Okay. We got no money for this. And so what the commissioners ended up saying was, yeah, you can plan it, uh, but you got to take care of it. Well, taking care of it, I mean, they couldn't run water on it. Yeah, I mean, it was one of those deals where for several years, there was a, a group of ladies that came to the courthouse lawn watering what they had planted from Smith Sawyer and Smith and from um, uh, what ended up being gotcha offices of uh, taking care of what is a kind of local treasure over there, uh, developing all of that. But what they had done is they had given a, a great deal of thought to what they were going to plant out there. So those locust trees um, were very carefully selected as what was going to be the filtered sunlight and everything that lets the grass grow without, I mean, they, they put a lot of time and thought into what was back there. And two things about that. One is that the tree out at the corner of uh, 9th of May died. I mean, Mark Kepler was sitting there listening to all this and he said, 
I don't know. He said, I've looked at that tree and I have no idea what killed it. Uh, but those ladies gave me a map with a legend on it. Bam. And uh, you, look, you look at the old, <laughs> at the legend, you can almost read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to fight your way through, through reading it uh, because of the quality of the copiers. But when they gave this to me, we're, we're talking about a while ago that I got that thing. Uh, and clearly it hasn't been exactly followed. New things have happened. The, those uh, amazing crab apple trees uh, that grow on the south lawn. And somebody put a state tree out there that got struck by lightning. So they, it died and they put a new one in. I mean, there's all kinds of things that have happened uh, over there. but. At some point, you or the council or somebody is going to have to sit down and figure out what you're going to do about replacing what might be the most important tree of the whole bunch that got cut down a week ago tonight, uh, last week. Um, I don't want to tell you what kind of tree to plant there because I haven't a clue. But a lot of people thought about it and they wrote some stuff down and I. I think, uh, well, first of all, you guys need to try to decipher that and see if you want to uh, continue following what they've got. Um, second thing is that when I left office, I didn't know what to do with that. Uh, I had, uh, well, I'll leave that for another time, but that shouldn't necessarily have been in my safekeeping, but if, if I'd left it for Chris, it would have been, what in the world is this? Uh, and so that is the kind of thing that somewhere along the line, probably you guys, the county executive, need to have a something to put county, county land, uh, courthouse property landscaping. And I, I, I put a landscaping title on it, wondering what all was going to fall into it. Not much did. But uh, uh, anyway, I've got that. I give it to you and wish you luck. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, at some point, you're going to have to sit down and figure out what to do about the tree, of course. And I suspect that won't occur tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, anyway, I want you to have that. And I want you to know the story. Yeah. Um, at the time it occurred, it was a big deal. Phyllis Binninger uh, was walking past the booth at about the time that uh, I was talking to these guys. And I said out loud something along the lines of, you know, when that happened, it was a pretty big deal. And she came across the table at me and said, yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a, uh, it was kind of a, a hot argument at the time as to how it was going to be taken care of. It's a long, long time ago, but um, um, I would, I'm saying 40s, uh, and I'm kind of, to some degree, making that up. But uh, when those trees were puppies, mm -hmm. so uh, anyway, I leave that with. Uh, that's the story I told them, and now I've told you too. I, I appreciate that, and I just want to make a comment to thanking all of them the community and the past commissioners and council for, I mean, we have a beautiful courthouse. And over the years, everybody has done a phenomenal job of taking care of that building. And we have instructed our maintenance director to look into that and some uh, landscape around here to kind of bring things back in order. We're getting overgrown in a few places, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's on our radar. Yeah, so well, you get there. That's part of the fun of landscaping is, among other things, you get to maintain. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But, uh, everybody's done a, a wonderful job, and, and uh, I, I love it to the courthouse. I don't think there's a weed in that courthouse law. And uh, certified takes a. I just been pleased with everybody involved with that. You know, the maintenance over there, and the planning of back in the day. It's we have a beautiful courthouse. I like when you look at me and say that um, <laughs> my lawn has weeds and I had nothing to do with any weeds. I will tell you that Red Holland won a variety of awards uh, 
while he was custodian over there. Uh, the people who have taken care of that, then yeah, you're dead right. Dead yeah, place. yeah we, we've got a lot of dedicated people. We, I, I commend them all. So, yeah. I'm going to go get some. Thank you for your story. No, I would dump I trip. suggest they don't, trip, plant don't, trip. don't plant trees at Kroger's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have uh, anything else? Any new business for the public? I entertain a motion to recess. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries 3 -0. Thank you, everybody.